Welcome to the Healthcare Executive Podcast, providing you with insightful commentary and developments in the world of healthcare leadership. To learn more, visit ACHE.org. And without further ado, your host. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Healthcare Executive Podcast. Our guest today is an accomplished leader who has played an important role in the career journeys of many healthcare executives. John W. Blueford III is the founder and CEO of the Blueford Healthcare Leadership Institute, which is committed to mentoring and coaching talented minority undergraduate scholars into the healthcare management field. Now, the goal of the Institute is to develop diverse talent that will influence the elimination of healthcare disparities among minority and underserved populations. From 1999 to 2014, Mr. Blueford served as the president and CEO of Truman Medical Centers in Kansas City, Missouri. While there, he recruited a team that executed a complete turnaround of corporate culture, financial operations, physician relations, and compliance issues. Mr. Blueford has served as chairman of the board for both the American Hospital Association and the National Association of Public Hospitals, which is now known as American Essential Hospitals. His innovations have been recognized nationally by Modern Healthcare, Becker's Hospital Review, and the American Hospital Association. In 2022, he received the President's Award from ACHE for his outstanding contributions to the association and the healthcare management field. Mr. Blueford earned his MBA with an emphasis in hospital and health services administration from Northwestern University, and he completed Harvard University's executive program in health systems management. He also graduated from Fisk University with a bachelor's degree in biology. He is a life fellow of ACHE and a member for 40 years. He is a role model to many. Mr. Blueford, welcome to the Healthcare Executive Podcast. Good afternoon, and thank you for that wonderful introduction. Thank you, and congratulations on winning ACHE's President's Award. What did it mean for you to receive that honor? Hey, Eric, it's always good to be appreciated by your peers and people in the field that I've known for many, many years. So it was a a wonderful experience for me to be back in Chicago. I think I started with the ACHE in the late 70s in that very same city. Uh, It was also good to... uh, reunite with a lot of colleagues and friends because in 2022, we were just coming off of the COVID experience. So saw a lot of folks that I hadn't seen for a couple of years. And then of course, a lot of new people entering to the fields just as uh, rewarding. So I'm very happy to follow in the steps of people like Fred Harvey and uh, Percy Allen, two good close friends of mine who've also been recipients of the award. Thank you. All right. You just talked a little bit about the early days of your healthcare career. So how did you become interested in healthcare management? Uh, Eric, I've told the story many, many times and I'll be brief, uh, but I got recruited by Northwestern University's Graduate School of Business while still an undergrad. And while an undergrad, I was preparing to go to Meharry Medical School across the street in Nashville, Tennessee. And this recruiter came in and made a strong argument. Uh, that I could be more effective in impacting my community as a hospital administrator who hired hundreds of doctors as opposed to being a single uh, practitioner myself in the community. And uh, that laid heavily on me and it became even heavier when he promised a full ride scholarship at Northwestern and $250 a month spending change. (laughs) <laughs> that kind of closed the deal. And uh, I went to business school not exactly knowing what it was and uh, ended up getting a, uh, an internship at Cook County Hospital, the old Cook County Hospital, which at that point in time was over 2,000 beds. And I had just phenomenal mentorship with two gentlemen, Mr. Robert Shackno and Mr. Bill Silverman, who were iconic in the city of Chicago at that time. And they learned uh, or taught me the ropes of a major academic level one trauma center environment. And that has served me well for many, many years. So that's kind of how I got into the business. Well, let's talk a little bit about your career now. And in the intro, we were talking about your prior role at Truman Medical Centers. Uh, Can you go into some of the detail? And we described that the turnaround that you were responsible for. What were some of the innovations you were most proud of? Well, the turnaround is a story in itself and is a a two-hour interview, but I'll I'll just say that uh, 
I walked into a situation that was in dire straits, uh, on the brink of collapse, according to the news media and many people in the community. Uh, we had a lot of problems with our budget, a $12 million loss, and this is in 1999. Uh, the institution had not been funding its depreciation, meaning that it was in need of a lot of capital infusion, both in terms of equipment and the building facilities. We had unionization problems. We had a bad turnover problem, about 30% turnover, which is like trying to train a parade if you're trying to manage a, 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 a successful organization. Uh, and last but not least, those were some of the good things. The bad things were that uh, the institution was fighting in public through the media, a number of lawsuits, including uh, some abuse with uh, Medicare and Medicaid and federal government. So I was very fortunate to have uh, uh, some very loyal employees from my previous employment in Minneapolis. And I brought a team of six people with me including a COO, a chief financial officer, chief information officer, an administrator for ambulatory care, and was able to hire a couple of very strong players in the Kansas City market, particularly in government relations. And we set forth uh, three major objectives. One, to create a quality environment for the care that we deliver. And secondly, to use uh, technology as a strategic asset. And last but not least, to be an employer choice for choice employees. And we kind of ran that mantra for 10 years. Same message, every meeting, all the time. And along the way, picked up some great partnerships with Cerner on the technology side. Another partner was Siemens on the technology side, so forth and so on, and became recognized nationally for some of our technology and our quality achievement. I'll just cut that off with uh, my last point is that I think it was in 2007, it may have been 2005, when UHC University Health Consortium recognized our hospital as one of the top quality uh, academic medical centers in the country, and we were paired with the University of Wisconsin and the Mayo Clinic and the Brigham, just to name uh, three others that got that award that year. So that was kind of a high-level watermark for us. In terms of innovations, boy, we had a lot, and we got a lot of credit for uh, a corporate academy, which was modeled after Motorola that had a similar program that was really a, a university on the hospital campus that did everything from GED education requirements to master degrees with all of the local universities and colleges participating in that program on our campus. That was great. We also got a lot of visibility and publicity with setting up a farmer's market on our campus. And we sold thousands of pounds of fresh fruits and vegetables on a weekly basis that a lot of other institutions across the country picked up on. It was a uh, response to being located in a food desert as uh, designated by the federal government. And then the last thing, or one of the last things uh, that was a lot of fun is that we created a hospital in an art museum. And we basically uh, threw, uh, we, we put up art corridors throughout the institution with national and local artists that became uh, quite a thing in our community where people would come to the hospital just to see the art. And of course, while they were there seeing the art, they happened to notice our new cath lab and our new cancer center, and our birthing center, so forth and so on. And I guess the last thing that I would mention that just comes to my mind, we also engage with U.S. Bank to put a banking facility, a full-fledged local bank in our hospital. And it really changed a lot of things for a lot of different people with teaching uh, financial literacy to our employees and patients and made a big difference in the ability for patients to have banking accounts and 
loans and so forth. Those are just a few of the things and be more than happy to go into any of them at length because uh, they're really near and dear to me and the, the people in the community that help make it happen. Yeah, some fantastic innovations. Let's talk for a minute about the Blueford Institute. So you've played a significant role in the careers and lives of many healthcare executives through the years. Can you describe the Institute's mission and then maybe some of the program's components? I certainly can. We've had about 130 undergraduate minority students come through this program. It's modeled after Harvard University's mid-careers programs. It is a very intensive didactic and experiential program that gives 12 to 16 students every summer a firsthand look at what a healthcare career might look like over and above being a physician and or nurse. So it exposes these young people to healthcare policy, to behavioral health, to FQHCs, uh, IT and healthcare, just giving them the full gamut of opportunities to look at health beyond nursing and physician. And of course, we have a lot of young people who want to be nurses and physicians, and they are encouraged to come. So they get exposure to the president of the American Hospital Association, to numerous ACHE executives running major hospitals across the country, some of our biggest systems in the country, uh, Henry Ford Hospital, Common Spirit, CHI, Atrium Healthcare. All of those CEOs have come and spent hours with our scholars, letting them know what it takes to run a major multi-billion dollar system such as they run. And these uh, young people then leave us and go and intern in some of those very same hospitals all across the country. So we've had 130 of these students come through our program, Eric. 80 plus of them are now working in the healthcare space. We're very proud of that. We are sponsoring, coaching, mentoring them to get into leadership positions so that they can impact healthcare disparities among minority and vulnerable patient populations all over the country. So we're going to talk more about that in just a minute, but do want to kind of just ask about the mindset for the young people right now. Uh, What is top of mind for them and what are those career goals that are being communicated to you? Hey, that is a great question because almost universally, and it might be a function of who we recruit, we personally go to college campuses and interview these students one-on-one. So we kind of have a feel for who we're bringing into our program, a good feel. And all of these students are deeply committed to the communities of which they come from. And many of them come from some of these desperate communities that have healthcare disparities and social economic determinant defect or deficiencies. So they know the problems firsthand. And they're, they're very committed to going back into the community and making a difference. I will tell you over the last five or six years, there's been a significant increase in these students wanting to get into behavioral health and public health. And all of that's good. And last but not least, they all want to know what's the quickest pathway to success so that I can be impacted. You just mentioned, you know, disparities in health outcomes. And during the pandemic, uh, we heard a lot about that for disadvantaged groups, especially communities of color. So how do we keep health equity in the forefront for executives and continue the work, continue working towards solutions? Yeah, well, you know, the genie is out of the box on that score. Anytime you can tune into national network news and everybody's talking about social economic determinants, then at least you have a piece of the mind of the uh, collective uh, United States and the community that we have a problem. So once you've identified a problem, you've got a chance to impact it. So now that we have people thinking about and talking the same language that many of us in safety net environments have been talking for decades, uh, we have a chance. And the key is programs like ours, the Blueford Healthcare Leadership Institute, that introduces young people and helps to sponsor them 
into leadership positions. They understand better than most what the issues are. And I do believe with programs like ours and others, uh, we have a chance over the next two generations to make a significant difference because these young people understand what the problem is. And we're giving them some tools to help eradicate the problem. I'm, I'm hopeful that it'll happen. One last question before we let you go. You have been a supporter of ACHE now for 40 years. So how do you promote the mission, the vision, and the values to those scholars you were just talking about? Well, you know, our mission is your mission, and that is uh, a, a lifetime of learning. And we are imposing that on these students now, uh, reinforcing the notion that they need to continue to grow. That's number one. Number two, uh, one of the first things we do once they leave us is insist or at least encourage them to join the ACHE. There are two organizations that I'm very fond of. ACHE is one of them and the National Association of Healthcare uh, Executives, NASA. Uh, and we are strongly encouraged that all of our scholars uh, join both those organizations, and they have done so. John W. Bluford III, the president and founder of the Bluford Healthcare Leadership Institute. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate the opportunity to share our views. Thank you. And thanks so much for listening today. And we will, of course, catch you next time on the Healthcare Executive Podcast from ACHE. This has been the Healthcare Executive Podcast, brought to you by the American College of Healthcare Executives. If you've enjoyed the show, please consider rating and reviewing on iTunes or your podcasting app of choice. And for more information, find us online at ache.org.